Look at this contraption. Tell me if that ain't tight. Motorized bike. Tell me what you got going on, man. Introduce us. It's a little too strong. Yeah? Too strong on a bike. Did you do that yourself? Yeah, I built it myself. Man, that's awesome. How old are you? 14. 14? Get out of town, man. You're awesome. You got a YouTube channel and Instagram? Yeah? Yes, with. Where can we find it? There you go. What are, what's your name? Izzy Casanova, 74. There you go. Man, that's tight, dude. That is awesome. Thanks for coming over and checking us out. I love the bike. Hey, I hate you from all the way down there. Oh, yeah. I'm testing the uh, rev ring. I'm trying to get the tune right on the car. And this is kind of the only place to do it without getting on people's nerves. But it still gets on people's nerves. <laughs> awesome, man. Look at this thing. That's crazy. Oh, let me do the video. What? That's wicked. How many times have you looked in your engine bay and saw your dipstick sticking out like that? And you stuck it back in, and then you can pull it back out real easy. I'm gonna show you how to fix that two different ways today. In this case, my dipstick had a O-ring that was dry and cracked. So it basically solidified. So let me show you what I did with it. I got this little O-ring kit. Either got it from Harbor Freight or I got it from O'Reilly, I don't remember which. And I found two of the closest O-rings in here that could fit. Which were in this slot. Now, I don't know if this is correct because I moved two different houses. So I don't know what's in the right order and what isn't, but for the most part it's pretty well arranged. So we're going to stick with, that's what I used. Because it came out of this slot. So here's my old one. This is the one I picked off with a pick and I broke it picking it off because it's so hard. And you can physically see the width of it is thicker than that replacement I got. So I doubled them up. Two of them. And it sticks out past the plastic now. Right there. Before it did not. It was basically flush with the outside of this orange. Before I fixed it this way, this was the go-to method. And every two months I'd just make another one. But basically I'd take a rubber glove and cut two fingers off and slide it on here until it stuck a hole through the finger. Voila! slip right in there and seal up too but it'll wear out over a period of time that's only a temporary fix that's all that is temporary fix and it works but it's not what I recommend permanently also make sure to check your PVC boxes your flame traps and your compression if you get a big excessive amount of blow by where it's puffing out smoke out of that thing when it's running real bad you know it's pretty worn out or something's wrong in my case, I have the factory flame trap box underneath here from the 8 valve, but it's like a 93. And it routes all the way back here and up here to my catch can, which is right there. My catch can comes all the way up here to the vacuum, to where it gets suction right here. Homebrew style nothing fancy that is a suburban AC accumulator it's got a Schrader valve on the end one end my hose comes up from there all the way up around back over behind the motor So it's important to make sure that your PVC is flowing correctly and that there's no blockages of any sort. So check your flame trap, all the lines, and the whole system, even the catch can, make sure everything's free flowing. Because if you have any stoppages, then that pressure has nowhere to go. And what do I mean by pressure? I mean 
when the motor's running and the pistons are going up and down, they're creating a lot of turbulence and air. And there's a little bit of blow by getting past the rings from the compression, uh, from those ring gaps, and just from the wobbling of the pistons going up and down at such a high rate of speed. So there's going to be some pressure that's introduced into the crankcase. So I want to get that pressure out of there as well as little droplets of oil spraying everywhere and getting slung everywhere in every direction. So it's important for us to have some kind of suction or evacuation system for all those vapors and that suction to go. Now sometimes if you have any stoppages in the system, you'll blow a dipstick out, no matter what kind of seal you use or how good the seal is on the dipstick. In this case, it was just a worn out O-ring on the dipstick. But if it was an O-ring that made a good seal, and it was blowing the dipstick out, and there was a ton of oil everywhere all over the engine bay, then we'd be looking further into the motor and doing a compression check and checking the head gasket out and maybe the rings and doing you know, a blow-by test uh, to see you know, where the leak is. Because it's a pretty common problem that I've dealt with on a lot of Volvos over the years. This was a 93 Volvo, but you know, it could apply to just about any kind of dipstick, really. You know, a lot of dipsticks are made the same way. to tune analyze start auto tune then I'll go through the rev limit real slow and so it goes through there and it changes it and of course I'm in a parking lot in the back alley I'm not trying to do this around people's houses. You know, it's entirely too loud. And then I'll just do that a couple times. And then I'll hit save on ECU because it can only change a certain percentage at a time. And then I'll hit stop and that'll reset this box down here once I start over again. So it, see, now I can change another percentage. got it set up so it can only change 25% at a time so that's why I have to keep saving and starting over on auto tune because if it has to go to 100% full change to tune it well it won't allow it to because I set it up for only 25% change or whatever I set it up at I'd have to go look revs a lot better 
lot cleaner, a lot more responsive. something awry. enough noise for now. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see here, please like and subscribe to Turbo World. And hit that bell. So you get all the videos right when they come out.